Here's a deceptive math problem. It looks straightforward enough at first glance, but there are some nuances to it. Most folks misinterpret the problem and come up with an incorrect answer on their first try. For example, someone might do the following. They could say, well, I've got a book here, and I've got a pen. And then say, when I add these two together, I'll come up with $11. And that makes sense, given the first sentence there. Then they look at the second sentence here to see that the book costs $10 more than the pen. And so what instinctively you do is you say, well, that's, if that's $10 for the book and $1 for the pen, that, must, that equals $11. Therefore, the pen must be $1. But hang on a second. It says here that the book costs $10 more than the pen. So if the pen cost $1, then the book would be $10 more, which means that rather than $10, it should be $11. And when we add these two together, 11 plus 1, then the total cost of the two is not $11, but $12. Hmm. So that means the value that we've picked for our pen is too high. It must be some value less than a dollar. Now we could continue with trial and error and pick some values of for the pen and see if they work. We'll eventually get there, but let's work on an algebraic solution. If we look at the first sentence, we can see that the initial idea is correct. And if we let x be the cost of the book and y be the cost of the pen, it is indeed true that the book plus the pen, or x plus y, does equal $11. And we then have our first equation. Now, if we look at our second sentence here, we see that the book costs $10 more than the pen. Well, we can come up with a second equation. The book, its cost is equal to the cost of the pen plus $10, or $10 more than the pen, and that becomes our second equation. And given that x equals y plus 10, I can take that value for x and substitute it in here, in the first equation. And what I would get would be that y plus 10 plus y equals 11. I've substituted the value of x in, from the second equation into the first equation. And what I end up with is a third equation. It only has one variable, which is great, the variable y, which is the cost of the pen, which is what we want, and I can just now solve for y. First step is to collect the like terms. I've got a y here and a y here, so this becomes y plus y is 2y plus 10 equals 11. Then I'm going to isolate the y, so I have to subtract 10 from both sides, so I get 2y plus 10 minus 10 equals 11 minus 10. Here I can see that these 10s will cancel each other out. And what I'm left with is 2y equals 1. And to get y by itself, I need, because this is 2 times y, I need to divide by 2 to get rid of um, the 2 on the left side. And so whatever I do to one side, i got to do to the other. And that means the 2s cancel out. And so what do I end up with? I get y equals one half, or for our purposes we call it 0.5, or 50 cents. Last thing to do would be to verify if we've got the right answer. Well, let's come back up to our original diagram here and say, well, if the pen cost 50 cents and the book was $10 more than that, then the book must be $10.50. And if we add those two together, do we equal the $11? We do indeed. Therefore, we know that our solution is correct. Y, which represents the cost of the pen, is half a dollar or 50 cents. And this is an example of why algebra is important.